Mike Shoesmith, welcome back. Listen, uh, Mike, um, it, it's good to have you in the house with us. So I, I know there's something that you want to talk about, and, and it has to do with a law back December 18 of yeah. uh, 2017. There oh, was, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ahead. 2017, December the 18th, there was a law that concerned truckers. Oh, goody. We're back with Padre Wanker again. And this time he's talking about my industry. Let's hear him and his guest a new one, shall we? Today, dear viewers, and yes, we have a revisit from an old friend, Pastor Carl Gallup, a.k.a. Padre Wanker. And today, he and his calling guest, Mike, are talking about the evil that Obama has wrought upon the American trucker and how the Messiah Trump has done bugger all to stop it. To hear them talk, you'd swear it was big brotherism at its finest. Now, a bit of background to start with. One of the two degrees I hold is in transportation logistics, the other being a near-useless criminology degree, and for damn near 30 years now, one way or another, I have been involved in the North American trucking industry, and currently I am a freight broker with an asset-based company. Padre Wanker, on the other hand, has about as much clue about the industry as he does about masturbation, and from listening to his calling guest Mike, well, he sounds like he's just a disgruntled driver with an axe to grind. Let us start with the trucker's joke, just to lighten the mood. What do you call a basement with two or more truck drivers in it? A wine cellar. Okay, back to the serious shit. Let's hear what Padre Wanker and Mike have to say. Mike Shoesmith, welcome back. Listen, uh, Mike, um, it, it's good to have you in the house with us. So I, I know there's something that you want to talk about, and, and it has to do with a law back December 18 of yeah. uh, 2017. There oh, was, a, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2017, December the 18th, there was a law that concerned truckers. Yeah. And apparently Donald Trump didn't do something and it made some people mad. So tell us about this because this involves truckers all over the United States and we've got a lot of truckers that listen to us. So why don't you hit on that? What they are talking about is the DOT's Federal Motor Carrier Safety Authorities requirement that all interstate trucking and bus companies are now required to install and operate an approved electronic logging device, aka an e-log, in all their trucks and buses, and cease using the old paper logbook system. This was mandated under the MAP-21 program of the U.S. Congress and Senate, and is part of the revamped hours of service regulations enacted in December 2014 and implemented in 2015. Yeah, well, uh, we don't have much time here, but it's a big deal out there, folks. Uh, it's an Obama-era law that was challenged in the courts for months and months and months. And finally, the law went into effect uh, December 18th. That is forcing all truckers in the United States and any truckers coming into the United States, which means the Canadian truckers, the vast majority of them, and Mexican truckers and so on, all truckers in the United States have to keep an ELD, which is an electronic logging device. And this ELD, it is, it is basically Big Brother watching everything you're doing, telling you when to stop for lunch, telling you when to stop to sleep, and it basically runs your truck for you. It does all but steer it, turn the corners and everything. There is a lot of bullshit in this clip. Yes, all carriers and drivers operating within the U.S., including Canadian and Mexican carriers, are required to switch over to the e-log system by December 18, 2017. However, this requirement was not sprung onto them out of the blue, and they had just over two years to comply with the new regulations. The final rules and regulations of the e-log mandate were released on December 16, 2015, and the carriers and drivers had two years and two days in which to make the switchover. 
And there were allowances for certain cases to delay their full compliance until December 16, 2019. A couple things should be noted. One, such e-logging devices have been the norm and in use in the EU for decades, and the UK adopted them in 2006. And two, many larger trucking firms have already made the switch over, and in some cases, years before they were required to do so. One of the firms I worked for as a dispatcher went to e-logs back in 2004 in order to curtail rapid logbook violations by the drivers. It should be noted that the drivers tried a nationwide strike to protest the implementation of the regulation. It fizzled out in less than a week and only caused minor inconvenience to shippers and brokers. All ELDs do is replace the existing and easily filled with paper logbooks. They do not control the truck. They do not tell the drivers when it's time to sleep, or when it's time to drive, or when it's time to take a crap. They just electronically and automatically record the driver's duty times, drive times, and various engine and mileage data, which the drivers used to have to do manually throughout their duty day with their paper logbooks. E-logs and ELDs do not and have not changed the hours of service rules these drivers are supposed to be operating under since 2015. The hours of service for long-haul drivers are pretty simple and not that hard to understand. Drivers can be on duty for 14 consecutive hours, of which only 11 hours can be used for driving. The other three hours are for loading, offloading, stops of fuel, food, or trading up in snowy mountain regions. Also, they have to take a mandatory minimum 30-minute break by the 8-hour mark of their duty day. After 14 hours of duty, drivers must shut down and log off for a minimum of 10 hours. After reaching 60 or 70 hours on duty, depending on the system you're on, drivers must take a minimum of 34 hours off to reset their logs. The biggest difference now is drivers can no longer bullshit their logbooks, nor run two or more logs at one time, which was rampant throughout the industry until the mandatory use of e-logs was enacted, and drivers now must adhere to hours of service regulations. And uh, this is Obama era law, and uh, many truck drivers were hoping that Donald Trump would put an end to this nonsense. And the reason it's nonsense, Carl, is because they have a legislative mechanism in place. The law is in place, right? They have a they have an enforcement mechanism. You know, they have the the DOT at the scales. They have Highway Patrol and so on to enforce this law. They have no compliance mechanism. They have, there's no way for these guys to comply to this law. You drive up and down the East Coast, truck drivers have nowhere to park, Carl. Again, complete and utter bullshit. The compliance mechanism is the same one as the old paper blockbook system, and it's the same compliance mechanism for most of the laws and regulations throughout the land. The person who is subject to these laws and regulations is responsible for their own compliance, not the state. It would truly be a big brother situation if the state were responsible. It is the driver's responsibility to plan his or her trip taking into account any possible delays due to loading or offloading issues, traffic or weather, and plan accordingly. He or she also needs to be mindful of their hours of service status and to know how far they can drive before they are in violation of the regulations. As for not having anywhere to park when off duty, this is complete and utter bullshit. There is an entire service industry throughout the US geared to servicing long haul truckers needs including fuel, food, showers, off-duty parking, and even fucking chapels with pastors. Backing those up are state-run rest areas along the entire interstate highway system. Failing that, most industrial parks allow rigs to park overnight on their side streets. And Walmarts also allow truckers to park overnight in their lots. So the truckers do have options. If a driver finds himself running out of drive hours and still miles away from the next available legal rest area, then he has nobody to blame but himself. Other than weather-related issues, highway closures, or breakdowns, there is no excuse for a driver not to be able to stop somewhere safe before running out of hours. So the way the old system worked was they had paper logs, and if there was nowhere to park, they could move on someplace safe to park a place legal to park and they could park there and they could they could uh, structure their their logging system on paper to conform to the laws and that's the way it was and it was been like that since the 40s since jimmy hoffa 
petition the government to have this uh, logbook system put in place so that more truck drivers would be needed so that he could get more dues into the Teamsters Union. Sorry, Teamsters, that's just a fact of life. And uh, so ever since the 40s, there's been paper logs in place. Disregarding the conspiracy bullshit about Jimmy Hoffa and the Teamsters, the paper logbook system was implemented in 1938 and was an attempt to regulate a fast-growing industry. It was around this time that the U.S. interstate systems were getting started and interstate trucking was beginning to take over from the railways. The introduction of logbooks and regional transportation commissions were an attempt to bring a measure of control and order to what was basically a free-for-all industry that had no thought for the safety of the drivers or the motoring public. These commissions set the rates and dictated who could or could not run on which lane. And it worked until the deregulation craze of the 1980s. Now what Mike was speaking about when he said structuring their logbooks basically means drivers fiddling with or bullshitting their logbooks so it was in compliance with the regulations. And it was a means for some drivers to run long past the mandatory off-duty time. Another trick drivers used was to run with two or more logbooks. However, getting caught doing either of these things could lead to fines and at least a 10 to 36 hour shutdown order. I cannot count how many times I have been told by dispatchers that their driver had been caught at the scale with a dodgy or incorrectly filled out logbook and had been forced to shut down for 34 hours to reset his log. These are known as fatigue driver violations and are the leading cause of carriers getting a conditional rating on their FMCSA safe board and for frequent violations. Carriers run the risk of losing their operating authorities and having their motor carrier number suspended. When a carrier becomes conditional, bigger brokers such as XPO, CH Robinson, Fuel and FLS become very leery about using them. CH Robinson has been hit by two major lawsuits in the past when they had contracted a conditional carrier to haul a couple of loads for them. In both cases, the drivers fell asleep at the wheel and caused fatal accidents. The relatives of the victims sued C.H. Robinson and won large settlements. The adoption of ELDs and the E-Log systems should all but stop the bullshitting of logs. Just the way random mandatory drug testing has put a large dent into the use of methamphetamines by drivers who in the past were trying to rack up extra miles per day. Also, E-Logs can protect drivers from unscrupulous dispatches and customers who in the past have demanded and forced drivers to violate the hours of service regulations in order to make pickup and delivery appointments. Again, this was something that plagued the industry for decades. And because of the Obama era legislature, they forced this ELT system, Big Brother electronic tracking system in. But Carl, it would be no different than if the, if the government said, Carl Gallops, and everybody else in the United States, it is the law that you have to make at least one trip every year to the moon. And by the way, we had, that's the law. So the legislative mechanisms in place, the uh, the uh, enforcement mechanism, if you don't do this, the fine is $10,000 if you don't go to the moon. Oh, and by the way, you have to find your own way there. And the only thing, the only stuff you have to build a spaceship is stuff, the chunk you find along the highway, by the way. Oh, and by the way, if you touch that stuff along the highway, there's a fine for that too. I mean, now that sounds ridiculous, Carl. But that's how ridiculous it is to say to truck drivers, okay, this electronic device is going to force you to park after 11 hours of driving and uh, you have no choice in the matter. Well, there are, there are hundreds of miles of interstate in the United States, especially up and down the East Coast, like Virginia, for example. There's nowhere to park. And if you park on the interstate, on the, on the get-on ramp or a get-off ramp, they will wake you up at 2 in the morning, give you a ticket, and say, now you have to go down the road. You cannot stay here. Well, I can't leave because this electronic uh, uh, monitoring device says I have to stay here for another six hours. Does it matter? Oh, and by the way, if you move, here's another ticket. Oh, Lord. This is not so much as bullshit, which it is. But it's silly beyond belief. Again, it is the driver's job and duty to plan out his trip so that he can make it to a safe rest area before he or she runs out of hours. What's so hard to understand about this? Yeah. So what are, the, what are these guys going to do, Carl? This is what's so ridiculous. You know what? Uh, uh, Donald Trump should have kicked this down the road uh, two, three, four years and said, states have to, we are going to free up land, federal land for the state 
so they can pave parking lots for these guys, lease out a corner of the parking lot to restaurant tours, and uh, let's build a great and awesome and wonderful place for these truck drivers to park. What a wonderful idea. After 80 or so years of interstate trucking, we would have thought someone would have figured this out by now. It makes perfect sense. It would be a money-making machine. Oh wait, someone did. In fact, a whole lot of someone's did. As I mentioned earlier, there is an entire service industry geared to meeting the needs and wants of the long-haul trucker. Up and down the interstate system, and in most urban centers, there are truck stops such as the Pilot Flying J Chain, where a driver can get fuel, food, showers, send faxes, cash in a few advanced T-checks or com checks, get a room for the night, hire the services of a lady or lad of negotiable affection, park overnight, and even go to chapel. Now, I went to the Pilot Flying J site and planned a trip from Chicago, Illinois to Richmond, Virginia, and found three of their truck stops along the route, all within allowable hours of service travel time. And Pilot Flying J is just one of many vendors looking to service the long haul trucker on the road. As mentioned, many Walmarts allow truckers to park their rigs on their lots. Not because they're kind-hearted, because they want the income these truckers will bring into their outlets. Then let's talk about doing electronic uh, handcuffing on them to force them to park. There's nowhere for these guys to park. There's no compliance mechanism, Carl. And that's the problem that these truck drivers are having. I got you. That's amazing. Well, see, we know Donald Trump listens to this show. So we know people in the White House do. He might not, but uh, he knows about this show. So maybe you've done some good with that. I appreciate you explaining that. I learned a lot. I did not know all of that. That's absolutely astounding. Mike Schusmith, that's why we have you on. We got to go. That's what the music No, Padre Wanker, you haven't learned a fucking thing from life. What you heard was a lot of whining and bullshit from a disgruntled driver. All I can say to Mike is... Suck it up, cupcake, and put on your big girl panties, because ELD and E-Logs are here to stay, just like mandatory random drug testing. And in my professional opinion, in the long run, the trucking industry will be all the better for it. Now, a couple of things Mike has failed to mention, and that as a freight broker, I have noticed is that carriers and owner operators are using the ELD and E-Logs as an excuse to be late, and worse yet, to jack up their freight rates. Until the industry shakes down and becomes accustomed to the new system and regulations, shippers are going to see increases in their freight charges, which they no doubt will pass on to the consumer. I do expect this to flatten out and drop in time, but yes, it's going to cost more to ship goods across North America. However, while it does make my job a bit more difficult, I will have to say that freight rates have been artificially and unrealistically low for the past 10 years or so. So, and an adjustment in the rates was long past due. As for you, Padre Wanker, I suggest you do a bit of research before you spout your BS or allow calling guests to spout theirs. It would stop you looking like the fucking idiot that you are. Well, folks, that's it for now. Except for one more trucker joke. What's the difference between a truck driver and a Labrador puppy? After six months, the puppy will stop whining. Anyways, it seems I will be revisiting white nationalism again sooner than I expected in my next video. Till then, take care and have a good one or two.